Okay, so you want to achieve this effect in Resolve. You can make this go forever if you wanted to, but it's kind of fun. It's really easy. So the first thing you're going to notice is you need to make sure your camera doesn't move. So as you can see this whole clip, nothing's moving. The camera is fixed, staying still. And that's just so you can make sure you can mask things without having to track the mask very far. All right, so I've imported my footage here. I'm going to create a new timeline. Um, go ahead and take your timeline and organize it so it's not in your original media. Then go ahead and take the timeline and you're going to find, let's zoom out here, you're going to find the part of the clip you want. So you can see that I set up the camera here and I ran away and rode up the top of the hill. And then as I come down here, you'll see me doing the actual jump. So if I zoom in here, you'll see, let's see right about here is where it's at. That's actually after. Let's look at the sound. And there's some sound. Right here. Okay, so if we're going to watch this jump, what we want to do is cut everything away we don't need. So you can see all this extra crap before this tape, the playhead. So B is blade tool, if you just want to do a quick shortcut. A is selector tool, delete, delete all the dead space. Then you can go back to the beginning of your clip and we would remove the part we don't want at the end. So once we finish landing, we just need to let that play out for a few seconds here. So let that go and go. And we don't want to see anything change in the scene as far as the camera moving. So I go as far as long as I can and that looks pretty good. And then I'm going to cut this end off and delete the end. So now we have just the clip we want. I make this smaller so I have more space to work in. And I'm also going to take the audio clip and I'm going to make it go down with Alt, holding Alt and click. And you can drag down a keyframe so it fades away. So now we have a nice, nice fade in. And then it fades away, so there's not extra noise. So it can get really crazy with multiple clips. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate this clip by holding Alt, click and drag up. It'll make another clip. Up above, you can see here, I'm going to change the color of this clip by going to right click, clip color, orange. Then move it down a few frames. Um, you'll have to play with this to figure out when, where it works best. But um, as we currently have it, if we hit play, it'll just jump to the next jump to the clip. So it's completely covered, so it's not going to work. You can see that jumping there. So what I do next here is I need to go into the color tab down at the bottom here. Select that. And then there's an option called power window or window, which you can click on. Before you click on it, come up to your notes panel, which is super scary looking if you've ever used it before. Just simply press I think it's Alt S, and Alt S will make a new node, um, and then go ahead and make a new alpha output. Take the little blue box and connect it to the output. Now, don't select this node or layer, select this one. We're going to click the pen tool, and we're going to draw a, a shape roughly where we come in. So I want to make sure that we're at the very beginning of this clip, which we are. And we're going to make sure that we have everything lined up here. And I'm going to go ahead and click the pen tool. I'm going to draw in a rough shape where I'm pretty sure I'm coming into the frame. And that's where it is. Take the softness and turn it up to what's appropriate for your resolution. I'd say anything around 2.5 is pretty good in that range. You can scroll up and down to zoom in and out on this window. And you can press the center click button on the mouse to move around the window. So it's really important to navigate in this as you're working in this space. Okay. The next thing you want to do is you want to make sure that we track this mask. So within the corrector two, I believe, is the uh, I believe it's the it's one of these. Um, this is something I like about Resolve. Um, if you select all of these and you move this playhead forward a little bit and move this, it'll show you which one's being changed. So there's a little keyframe right there. If I twirl this down, just turn these off for a second. It looks like the power curve is what was changing. So just make sure you have power curve selected. It claims to have something happening with sizing, it looks like as well. Um, so leave that one selected as well. So power curve and corrector two, I guess. And we're gonna go in and zoom in here and navigate. And we wanna make sure we get this. So we're gonna move along the playhead here. And we're gonna move through the frame. So I wanna get it as close to the beginning of the bike clip as possible. So it looks like we're really far back here. So you gotta move back. You can change this as much as you want. 
Um, people call it, if you do a lot of this in fine detail, it's called rotoscoping. Arrow keys are an easy way to move forward and back. As you can see, I can just move the clip and it changes the keyframe. So just keep going forward. And then we want to get um, as close to the body as possible um, with that feather, just so we give enough space for the next clip. We'll be duplicating here in a minute to show you how to do that. So we'll clip forward. And you see this is moving forward pretty nice. It's already moving forward because I masked it a little bit beforehand. Keep going. And this can take a few minutes. Um, and it's definitely, there's a steeper learning curve with these, ty these types of effects. So there's the wheel. Um, so don't get too frustrated. Um, just take your time. And the more you do this, the faster you'll get at it. I generally have done this actually in Premiere. So um, this is a little bit different technique than it would be in Premiere, but essentially it's the same. This is actually a little bit easier to work in because it doesn't require you to do as many clicks. So I'm just kind of fine tuning our mask or quote power window here. And as I get that, I'm not sure why they call them power windows. I'd have to look up why that's that, that way, the way it is. Also, I apologize. My microphone is just my webcam because I'm being super lazy with the audio right now because I'm mostly making this to help someone out who had a question. Now I'm keep going and I'm going to do this as fast as possible because I have to go to a shoot here in a little bit. Um, let's go ahead and bring this back in. And you can add more points to your masks and power windows as you go. It's not going to hurt too much on something that's this basic. Um, what becomes difficult is if your camera moves. If you have a moving camera, you have to use uh, more advanced tools like motion tracking, uh, planar track tracking, stuff in like uh, After Effects or in this case Fusion, which is in this software. It's down at the bottom there next to the, I think it's the one before the music tab or the color tab. I'll keep going here. And you can see I'm going like frame by frame. You can move further down and do multiple frames, like go two frames, then estimate and adjust again. But this is such a short clip, like it's it's worth getting every frame right. And there is a track mask option in Resolve, so it'll actually automatically track your subject. But I'm not super fond of that either because then it if it's this short of a clip, why would you why would you waste your time going and fixing everything if you could just make it right the first pass? So um, you know, some people may criticize me for that, but do it right instead of do it twice. You know, it's kind of the the mentality here if it's something this basic. Um, and so I'm adding more points in, and there are, there are people who are way better than this at me. This is mostly just a simple, fun little trick to do with your footage. And um, if, you're, if you're doing it in a short burst of time like this, and there's not a lot of stuff moving like trees, everything's pretty static, it's definitely easier. If you were to shoot like um, there are people in the background walking around and stuff, it could be harder. Um, so another thing to note is, we like to make sure we're following this subject perfectly here. The other thing to note is, as you're doing this, um, you'll start to see that your feather, which is the soften on your mask, can start chewing into your wheels and stuff, and that can take away from the effect a lot if you, let's do two frames, if you don't pull them back. Because as I'm approaching the camera here, the subject is getting bigger, and as it's getting bigger, I need to expand the mask. So you see, I'm, I'm giving it more wiggle room. And this should only take you, you know, 15 minutes max to get through something this basic. And I'm going as fast as I can because I don't want to edit this video. Um, we're going, going, going. Let's do two more frames. Do, do, do. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. Oops. Control Z. Let's go back. So I believe one of my key, my key frames there. And this is also a technique to do um, other things like color correction using masks and power windows to isolate areas to do color correction in. Um, I'm not doing any color correction this because it's just for Facebook. Something super basic. It's not supposed to be some complex, crazy Hollywood production. If it were, you know, I'd better be getting paid for it because this is free. All right, keep going. It's two more frames. You notice I've kind of jumped ahead a little bit on frames because now the, the sizing is getting more dramatic. So I want to kind of have those keyframes smoother and kind of ease between each other. And once we get this layer done, we only have to do this mask pass once. So this is the only time we have to do it is this one layer. And I'm doing this on the second layer, not on the first layer in our edit tab. So I remember I duplicated the, the footage. The reason being because 
If you do it on the uh, main, the base layer, you have to know what's called a clean plate or slate or whatever the heck it's called, um, which makes it so you can have something overlaying on it. Then sometimes it's just a still image, sometimes it's a video you take before you go. Um, like, like this, for example, this first jump before this second clip, it's the same jump, but I haven't done any masking, so it's the actual original jump. So when you watch the video, the first jump is the original video, and you actually watch it all the way through, and you're just having these other mini videos playing on top of it, like overlaying the footage. So it's kind of it's kind of a cool effect because you're not having to do a lot of uh, special effects work. Um, let's keep going out. Looks like we're exiting the frame here, and. If, if you ever have any problems with your, your keyframes, your masks at any point, you can always go back into the, the color tab here and you can keep adjusting them. So if you screw up a point or if it's, if it's covering a wheel, you can always go back and, and add or remove or, move or wiggle these little points. And I generally tend to keep as many available as I can because with moving subjects and things like that, the uh, the the plane the tracking always changes just a little bit so this isn't something I do in excess a lot of either this is something I'm doing for fun here so bear with me on that and I'm not sure how long I've been running for in this video but I have to wrap it quick okay so I'm gonna do um, a shorter version of the full length one but I'll I'll give you a basic understanding of how to add an infinite amount of jumps which is just more and more layers and then if you get to a point where you have like 30 people jumping in a row, which would be silly. Um, you can actually export the video and then you could loop it on something. You could GIF it with um, Photoshop or whatever your heart wants to do. Just follow, follow your heart's desire with that. Um, another thing to note is I'm not tracking the shadow and that's because I don't want to. Um, no one's going to notice at this level of production that the shadow is being missed. And if you did notice it, then good job. But the uh, the shadow is something that would be more make it even more realistic if you tracked it again. So basically made another layer or another mask and made another power window and did the same thing. Um, I don't really care to do that because this is once again just mostly for fun. All right, so now we've got that all tracked. If I go back, you'll see inside here all these different keyframes I've made down here. If you press play and zoom out all the way, you'll see, let me go ahead and go back. Let's see if we can play through that. All right, see that moving? So let's move in back again. Let's watch it closer. See how it's following the subject? Perfect, okay. So now if we go to edit over here, and we look at this layer which has been selected, this orange one, I made orange, it'll give us a person behind jumping right here. So let's go ahead and watch that. Cool, so I'm gonna bring it closer. So it jumps faster, more follow, perfect, okay. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take Alt, click on this second, this layer and drag it up, make this layer. I always make the clips different colors because you never know, like if you have a ton of layers, what's happening, because they're all the same colors. So just color code them, code them, play. Okay, so then we have three, let's watch it. Let's get the guy closer, that guy being me. I'm also not the world's best mountain biker, I just do it for fun, so I'm not claiming to be incredible. I'm just helping other riders make themselves look a little bit cooler with Resolve. By the way, this is, this is free software, so if you are questioning you know, the affordability of this, if you own a smartphone and you own a bike or a anything, you could do this in your kitchen if you wanted to. I've seen a dude um, on YouTube do it with like a cracker box, so like a popcorn box, like you can do anything you want. Um, and you know, there's a lot, a lot of tutorials there for, for Resolve, and if you learn this software, um, it's, it's invaluable because there's a lot of things you can do with it to make content. So here we're going down, and then that's it. So we have all the audio clips duplicated as well. You can see there's a divide here, and that's all those. And I can make this smaller, I believe, so you can see more of what's happening here on the timeline. There we go. So you see how it fans out? Everything above is video, everything below is audio. So you see how my audio tracks, video tracks, each one's a writer. And each one of these, if I go into color tab, will be here. And you can see I have the power windows exactly the same. So they're happening all simultaneously. And they're going to that alpha output, which is 
to be frankly honest, I don't think anyone understands what alpha even is, except that it's like transparent or something. So, all right, so then you go to send or deliver. Um, you can go to YouTube format, you can go to whatever you want, um, add to render queue, let's call it bike jump. And then I'm gonna make it just HD. You can make it something else. Um, it's up to you. Add render queue. Uh, I'm gonna put it on the desktop, save and then go to surrender. And this should export the video in its entirety um, fairly quickly because it's from a cell phone, the bitrate's super low, and it's very easy. I've been very chatty through this, um, and I have to leave here in about two minutes. So um, we'll get finished before then. And I believe I left a little bit too long of footage at the end there. So see how it keeps going and going and going? So I'm gonna cancel that. I messed up here. Live on camera, I messed up. Once you get the last jumper going, go back to your edit tab. Um, let's play through that. Jump, 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 jump. Last guy. Remember that clean plate right here? That's the original video. Select all of that blade. And there's also, there's a shortcut to cut all of them, but I haven't transferred over all of my shortcuts from Premiere yet, and I should learn resolves, but it just takes more time, and you know, I don't want to take more time doing this. Okay, now I'm going to go back to, the, now it's going to export to there, so it's going to be this long as opposed to what it was before. Um, go back to the send. Awesome, we got our 4K. Okay, sure. Replace. Start render. And Premiere, this is the free version of Resolve. The actual paid version is actually much faster. I'm, I'm not able to use my GPU to do a lot of these effects processing and stuff. So it's actually heavy on the CPU. Um, when it's exporting, it does rely heavily on the CPU um, for exports. But um, I do intend on buying the full version of Resolve. It's just the, for the work I'm doing right now, um, it's mostly in Premiere. So there's not a lot of benefit for me switching over beyond having, besides learning the new, new interface. So I'm going to go ahead and open up our, our finished clip here and I believe it is bike jump. I'm going to open it here. Okay, so let's go ahead and watch this. That's it. Okay, one more time. We'll watch it one more time. It's cool. And if you freeze frame any of these, you have like a instant Photoshop basically of your jump line or whatever you're doing, like kind of cool. You can use this for training purposes too if you're trying to analyze your biking abilities or whatever athletics or stuff like that. I mean, it's kind of a cool thing to, and it lets you kind of follow how, I, how you land, how you're doing something, or it's just something you can gifify and make cool for social media. Okay, that's it. Alrighty, and I'm out.